A supernova is the most spectacular explosion in the night sky that often outshines entire galaxies. The energy involved in a typical supernova is equivalent to the energy released by 10 to the power 32 atomic bomb explosions. These are majorly divided into two categories, type 1 and type 2 supernova. Amongst type 1 supernova, we shall confine our attention to type 1a supernova. These occur in binary systems consisting of one white dwarf. When its companion becomes a red giant, there is a significant possibility of mass transfer to occur from the red giant to the white dwarf. Now the maximum mass that a white dwarf can have is given by the Chandrasekhar limit which is around 1.4 times the solar mass and beyond this it is not possible for electron degeneracy pressure to balance gravity. If the mass transfer increases the mass of the white dwarf beyond the Chandrasekhar mass, then gravity cannot be balanced anymore and white dwarf star undergoes a catastrophic explosion which disrupts the star completely, leaving almost no remnant behind. All type 1 supernova are produced in this way by the explosions of white dwarfs of identical mass under identical conditions. Thus, all these supernova appear identical. Type 2 supernova take place in much more massive stars. This is inferred from the fact that they usually take place in regions where star formation has taken place recently. And massive stars which are short-lived are found mostly in such regions. When the core of the massive star completely runs out of all nuclear fuels, it starts shrinking until the core becomes core density becomes comparable to the density inside an atomic nucleus. The neutron degeneracy pressure can balance gravity at such densities. When this happens, the rapidly shrinking core suddenly stops shrinking anymore. The surrounding material falling inward with the core gets bounced back and the supernova is caused by the explosive bouncing off of the envelope surrounding the newly formed neutron star core. Core collapse supernova include type 2, type 1b and type 1c supernova where the life of the star ends with a rapid collapse and a violent explosion. This occurs in the post main sequence evolution of the massive stars which are more than about 8 times the mass of the sun. After all the hydrogen has been converted into helium, the fusion reactions slow down and the energy release is reduced. Thus, the gravitational pull overcomes the outward pressure and the core starts to contract. This contraction increases the temperature of the core again such that the helium begins burning. Once the entire reserve of helium has been converted into carbon, once more the core begins contracting and the temperature of these massive stars rise high enough that the carbon even begins to burn, producing a variety of byproducts like oxygen, neon and magnesium. We can assume that each reaction reaches equilibrium and an onion-like shell structure develops in the interior of the star. Still higher temperatures around a billion Kelvin are obtained and the oxygen in the oxygen neon core ignites forming a new core composition dominated by silicon. The oxygen burning process which starts when the core reaches a billion degrees takes around 6 months to complete and leaves the core mostly made of sulfur and silicon. The core contracts until it reaches a temperature of about 3 billion Kelvin and the final fusion process in its late stage evolution sets in called the silicon burning process. This leads to a whole complicated chain of reactions which end up in nickel which being unstable decays into iron. Iron is the most stable element there is as it takes energy both to fuse it into bigger elements or to break it down. As iron starts building up in the core of the star over the course of hours, the star runs out of fuel and its final collapse begins. Now that thermonuclear fuel is exhausted, the iron core rapidly loses energy via neutrino escape and collapses under its own gravity in a matter of milliseconds. This causes the core to go into one last fight for life as heavy nuclei pile up close together. Due to rapid electron capture by protons, while beta decay is blocked due to degeneracy, neutron-rich matter piles up. Carried by the core bound shocks, these neutrons bombard lighter nuclei to create neutron rich isotopes in a matter of seconds, which might enable spontaneous fission to other high mass elements via beta decay 
once neutron gamma radiation equilibrium is reached and so on called the R process. This is accompanied by the slower S process and the much rarer P process to create basically all of the higher mass elements found in nature, including neutron-rich isotopes of actinides. In fact, discovery of plutonium and fermium is said to be based on R processes in thermonuclear weapons. Given such a catastrophic process may happen in succession like its S cousin, the R process can bring about elements thought to belong to the island of stability, corresponding to the magic number of nucleons. Neutron capture nucleosynthesis might therefore be the hotbed of new undiscovered elements. Supernova are by far the most energetic and probably also the most efficient way to pile a matter into dense clumps. The colossal explosive death of a star is believed to trigger star formation in outer shells of the nebula. A supernova releases a certain type of mechanical wave that can possibly give rise to the formation of a star by compressing certain regions of the nebula. This particular type of released wave is what separates a supernova from a conventional bomb in principle. These waves are called shock waves. These are mechanical waves that move locally faster than sound in the medium. The resulting supersonic flow leaves the surrounding medium no chance to react to the disturbance accordingly causing an instantaneous or rather abrupt change in the local mechanical properties of the fluid. So, when a colossal explosion like a supernova takes place, it sends clumps of matter in an outer direction at supersonic speeds that generate uh, supersonic flows in the medium. Now, pressure progressively builds in a region where any sound wave in the medium traveling against the flow cannot move upstream anymore. This is how a shock wave is created in the medium. Now, star formation in principle, is much more complicated than just piling up a matter. The shock waves from the supernova can push ordinarily thin matter into thin sheets, just as a plow pushes snow. It can be shown that when a shock wave from an emission nebula hits an interstellar molecular cloud, or say the outer shell of any other nebula, it moves around the thinner exterior of the cloud rather than penetrating the thicker interior. That tells us, rather than blasting matter from one direction, Shockwaves generally squeeze in from many directions. So they cause more of an implosion of matter rather than an explosion. This results in a state where gravitational instabilities take over, uh, dividing the cloud into fragments that eventually form the star. Explosions are seen as, as this act of destruction but the fact that one of the largest explosions in the universe makes everything that we can see or touch is it's astounding. It humbles you.